Hey guys, my niece here. Today I'll be teaching you how to play chess. Our last video wasn't clear at all, so we'll make this video much, much better. Yeah? The board is eight by eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And it's 64 squares in total. Huh? It's a grid of 64, yeah? We should always start by placing the pieces, or else you get nothing to move. We're gonna start with the white pawns. The white pawns are always on the second rank. Oh my god, what, is my, what am I doing? Really? Yeah, I'm not good at using this. Here, I'll just delete them. Okay, do not mind that. Here is the full second rank filled with pawns. Now we're gonna do the pawns for the black team. Huh? It's not in the second rank, but the seventh rank. Now we're gonna do the rook for the white team. Huh? The white rook is on A1, H1. I'm so sucky at this. Okay, I'm sorry, guys. And the black one is H8. H8 and A8. The white horses is on G1, B1. The black horses, G8, B8. Now the white bishop. It's always on C1. Oh my. Okay. C1, F1. Black is C8 and F8. Now for the queen on queen for both sides. The white queen is on B1. And the white king is on e1. The black queen is on d8. And the black king is on e8. Now that we got the full board ready and all the pieces are well placed, we can now start knowing how to move the pieces. First, I need to clear the board. And I'm going to place one on. So at the beginning, you have a decision to move one step or two step. But after that, I move. But after I move one step or two steps, I can only move one steps until the end. If my pawn was at the E or the D, I would rather move it two steps because the middle is the most. P so here, here's an easier way. D4, E4, D5, and E5, you control the most power when any of the pieces are there. But it's a decision, so you can move your pawn one. It's okay. And now I'm going to do this. I forgot to say that the pawns kill diagonal. So if there's any piece for black on that side or this side it can go like that and if my pawn was here also it can go like that and here's going to be a pawn trade if you wonder it's not fair black has two pawns and white only has one but it's white's turn which means that the that the white pawn kills here and the black one kills the white pawn now it's fair. They both earned one point. Yes, and I said one point because pawns give you one point. It's the value for the pawn. Now that we're done knowing how the pawns move, we are going to do the rooks. So the rook moves vertical
or horizontal. Huh? And the rook also kills these ways. So if my rook is in the middle and there is a bishop on his left side, the rook can go and kill that bishop. And the rooks are worth five points. So if this black bishop kills this white rook, the black team will earn five points. And that is it for the bishops. Sorry guys, I am so hungry for those. I mean the rooks. Okay, so we're gonna do the horses. Like I said, the horses are always here and here for the white team. And for the black team, it's there somewhere. I mean, sorry, here or here. Okay. So the horses can move one diagonal. I mean, I mean, one forward and one diagonal, which means an L form. Why I said one forward and one diagonal instead of L form is if I say an L form, I can have it go like this or any L form. So what we do is say one forward and one diagonal. Horses are worth three points. And also the horses kill the same way as they move. Oh, and the horses have an ability to leap over pieces. So in the beginning, you can't move any of the pieces. So you can't move any of the pieces because the rook it's getting blocked by this horse, then the horse is getting blocked by here, and then it's just full. But the horse can move because it can leap over pieces. So it can leap over this pawn, so now it's here. So that's why in the beginning, it can jump forward. Because if you think of it, imagine a horse that can't jump. Now that we are done the horses, we are gonna move on to the bishop. The bishop are like a ghost. If it's on that black rank, it'll stay on the black rank forever. So it's a ghost to the white rank. So if you wanna kill, no, if you want, if you're thinking of a plan to kill this pawn, you can't. Because that pawn is on the white square. So if I go like this, I can't get it. I can't get it. I can't do anything to get it. Because I'm always going to land right beside it or not even aiming at it. That's why they made it three points also. Huh? The bishops are worth three points. And they kill the same diagonal. Yeah, the same way they move. And now the queen and the king. The queen is the most strong piece and is worth nine points. Because it can move vertical, horizontal, backward. Oh, and by the way, every other piece that I showed you, except for the pawn, can move backward too. And then it can move... Uh, yeah. And also it can move diagonal. And... Yeah. But it cannot move one forward and one diagonal. It cannot move the horse's way, because it's not a horse.
Now doing the king. The the king is on E. Oh, and get out of here, queen. You don't want it anymore. Okay, back to the king. So the king moves one step forward, can kill forward. One step backward, can kill backward. One step diagonal, can kill diagonal. And one step back diagonal, can kill back diagonal. So there's something called a check and a checkmate and a stalemate. So first we're gonna start with a check. A check is if your, so imagine my horse is here and yeah, it's the black to me. The black is now hitting the king, but the king is not like any other piece. It's not like it can just take it and then you continue playing. You have to give a signal that you're aiming at it because you cannot take the king. Well, you could, but if you do, it's the full game is over and whoever took that king wins. So they say check. And then that gives a signal for the king to move away. And if the king just doesn't move away, well, it's illegal to do that, but if it doesn't move away and it just moves, stupid move, like, yeah, palm forward, then it's game over. And now a checkmate. A checkmate is, well, I'm gonna think of one. So my black, so my white king is in the middle. Here, here I know what this is. This is a checkmate. So imagine first my rook was here. Here, so let's say that my, can I jump this? Okay, um, uh, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, okay. So imagine it's black to move. Wait, what, what am I doing? Okay, sorry. So here's a checkmate. So it was my turn, it was the black's turn, huh? and then it moved here. Well, just, you see, that's why I was thinking, because like, I can't make it go like that. Anyways, so imagine the black moved a place for his rook and then came to h8, and it's a checkmate, because wherever he goes, the king is dead. Now I have to say checkmate, and then you win the game. Because he can't move here, can't move there, can't move back. Because it's going to get... Because it can't... Because it's getting destroyed by these two rooks. You can just say black wins the game once black wins. And now stalemate. A stalemate is this. It's black to move. Or maybe... Yeah. How am I going to do this? Oh, yeah, here's a stalemate. Okay. I'm going to clear the board. So this time, this black king will get into the stalemate. So look, it's black to move, but he cannot move anywhere. If he moves here, he's going to get killed by the pawn. If he moves here, he's going to get killed by the pawn. If he moves here by the king, and by here by the king. So that means he cannot move anywhere without getting in check. That's what you call a stalemate. A stalemate is technically a draw. And now the cool interesting fact about the pawn. If the pawn reaches the end of the board and survives all that misery that the war had, it can become uh, those strong pieces. So if I, if you're bored of this pawn that can only kill diagonally and can't do anything else than moving forward, once it reaches the end, you can either switch it with a horse, a bishop, a rook, or a queen. Now that's something that's amazing with the pawns. And then after that, that's technically like your turn. So he's, okay. My pawn's here, and then he moves here, and then when he moves there, he turns into a queen, and then it's black to move. 
you're allowed to have as many queens in the game not at not nine because you don't have nine pawns you only have eight pawns and it's technically impossible to get all your pawns surviving and getting to the end of the board i would say like you can get up to four queens or five queens because that's something you can really do and yeah that is it for today i hope you learned so much and i hope you like the video